And here they are, guys. Bear Burgers. I'm up at my family camp. I came up, I snowshoed across the lake today. I've been taking snow off the roof uh, because there's about three feet of snow on the roof and even more on the ground right now. And I've taken a lunch break. I've brought some big wild year food with me. Bear Burgers, maple syrup. If you're interested in this day adventure, follow along. I've also been tracking on my activity monitor and I think this is my biggest energy expenditure day of the year so far. Uh, and I'm really interested to look at my stats at the end of the day um, and see how all the snowshoeing and work has um, impacted my heart rate and calorie burn. Okay, so I'm just going to be packing pretty light on this day adventure up to my family camp to get all the snow off the roof. We've had a huge accumulation of snow and I'm a little bit worried about the weight of it up there. So I'm packing up for the day and this is what I'm bringing. So I've got some camera gear. I don't plan to be out in the dark, but I want it to be prepared. So I've got my flashlight. Um, if there's a whiteout condition crossing the lake, I have my compass uh, so I don't get lost out there. It's a five kilometer stretch from the one shore to the next shore where my camp is. These are bear sausages. That's going to be my lunch up at camp. Brought some pellets and a pellet gun in case there are squirrels living in the camp because we don't like that to happen. Spare socks, plus the layers of clothes that I'll be wearing. Thermos of herbal tea, one liter of water. I can always melt snow when I'm up there. And my camera case, my tripod. And I should be all set for this day adventure. Here's my pelican sled. Okay, here's all the pieces for the snow rake. So I'll tie these together before I go across the lake. And those will just sit in the shed in the sled like that. So we've got five lengths. The rake. And I forgot my shovel at home, so I need to go grab my shovel too. Look at how tall those snow banks are. We're having a record snow year here in uh, the south end of northern Ontario, I guess you could say, is our region. We saw where the snow plow has um, plowed up a few big ice balls that have then rolled back down the bank and onto the road, which is, looks a little bit dangerous. But Otherwise, the roads are pretty bare. It's a nice day. It is minus 12 degrees outside. Just a little bit of a breeze, so it shouldn't, shouldn't be too cold going across the lake. Now I'm beside the uh, upper end of the Ottawa River, just at the Quebec border. You can't even see it over the snowbanks, but uh, trust me, it's out there. The Ottawa is a dark stream. The Ottawa is deep. Great hills along the Ottawa are wrapped in endless sleep. It's where the purple waters turn to meet the valley of north. I found a road to Mattawa, and on it wandered forth. The road was built for free men, fenced along in wood, and every blossom at its edge declared that life was good. So look at this slide in a second. So this is the Pelican Snow Trek 60 or Snow Trek 70. Uh, a really, really durable sled. And I've done a couple of upgrades on it. So I put boat cleats, three on each side, which allows me to very quickly lash in um whatever i've got and it prevents me from having to feed a line through you know if i put like an eye hook on there or something so i found these to be really good and they're pretty low profile so they rarely get caught on branches or anything if i'm in the woods put a ruler a fishing ruler on the side so when i'm out fishing i always can check i don't have to remember to bring the ruler because i've always got one right on my sled to check the size of my fish and 
The other thing that I've done with this guy is put on some tow poles. So they connect underneath and I basically melted these eye hooks into the ends, each end. Um, and so this end I rigged it to go on a belt. Easy pulling. Got my shovel. And then I started going across the lake. I realized I almost forgot my camp key. Which is critical if I want to get in and cook those bear burgers for lunch. So I need that. So I'm taking uh, advice from a scout. And I'm dressed for the second mile. So I'm a little bit chilly right now because I just got started. But uh, by the time I'm a mile in, I should be warmed up pretty good. The only thing is the wind is pretty biting right now. I'll have to cover my face up a bit better in a minute. And I'm just heading over to the main sled trail. So far, no slush. And uh, maybe I won't need my snowshoes the whole way across if the trail's nice and packed. If you didn't look outside, it's almost like walking in on a summer's day. And uh, also the issue with the temperature. So, first order of business is we're going to get a fire going in this wood cook stove. Boil up some water from the snow. Heat up my tea. Put my bear burgers in the oven to thaw and start to cook. And I'm really happy that before I left in the fall, I stocked up the camp with a bunch of dry firewood. And we always have matches up here. A little bit of cooking oil, a little bit of emergency food, a little bit of fire starter, cardboard, newspaper, little kindling pieces. Things that every camp should have so that you're prepared if uh, you come up in the winter, but also importantly, if somebody else were to get stranded and had to use your camp in an emergency, it could be the difference between life and death for someone in that kind of a situation. And the second order of business is going to be to shovel out the outhouse.
Oops, I had a little problem with the microphone here, but I'll do a quick voiceover just to explain what happened. Um, within a few minutes of lighting that fire, I noticed that smoke was coming out of all the little nooks and crannies of that stove. Um, so obviously there was no draft up the chimney and I pretty much smoked out the camp. Um, and so I went outside and looked and sure enough, because there is so much snow on the roof and no heat being generated within the camp to keep a vent hole clear, the chimney was completely buried in snow. And uh, so I set out to try and uncover it so I could get that fire started back up. find my chimney yet. past noon. Look how smoky it is in here. So I never found my uh, chimney yet under all that snow and I've been shoveling for almost two hours. That fire's gone out. So on the bright side maybe this will smoke the mice out of the camp. And here's my backup plan. Barbecue on the porch. So uh, I'm gonna melt some water, make some tea, and get those bear burgers going. These are the uh, bear burgers that Dolphiny and I made a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago now. There are four little burgers in here and um, I'm going to eat all of them. So if you want to see how we made those, I don't know if we did a video about it actually, so maybe I'll just talk about it now. We uh, mixed in some leeks and some other wild ingredients. Some ground up bear meat. And we made a big batch of them, so we froze a bunch. I'm going to melt this water. Let these kind of thaw. And then I'm going to take the water off, close this lid, and uh, finish cooking them that way. I got all that snow melted down in the big pot, so I poured it into the smaller pot and I hope it comes up to a boil on the barbecue here. And the barbecue is not getting very hot because the lid's not closed, so I'd like to be able to cook these burgers up properly. Bear meat has to come to an internal temperature of 
something like 160 degrees Fahrenheit in order to kill parasites. So I want those to be well cooked. This water is warming up. And I'm making some white pine needle tea. Pull the dead ones out of here. Um, so when that water is hot, I'm just going to drop these needles in. And then I think I might add a big wild year cheat. This is not maple syrup that I made, but it's up here. And I think I'm going to cheat two tablespoons out of there for my tea. I guess we'll give this a try. Just have the lid closed as far as the pot and see if that heats up a little bit. Just open that up so you can have a look at these guys. The water is too hot for me to keep my finger in now and these guys are starting to sizzle. The fat's dripping down below so I'll just give them a little flip and uh, set the lid back down and we should be getting close. Again. I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if that water is going to get to a boil soon, but I think it's hot enough to steep. So I'm going to throw some pine needles in there, let these guys continue cooking. Check again in a minute. I'm getting hungry. Okay, set that aside, let that continue to steep over here, Turn these burgers around a little bit, oh yeah, they look pretty juicy, I don't have a meat thermometer up here, so I'm just going to have to make sure that I cook them enough that I can be confident that they are cooked. Now I drank all my tea that I brought with me. So, before I pour that pine needle tea in here, I'm going to pour a little bit of maple syrup in here. If it's not too frozen to pour. See what we get. Oh, there it is. Yum. Condiment of champions. I think I might put some on my bear burgers too. Tea should be deep, so I'll see if I can uh, pour it in here without making too big of a mess. Maybe I'll move my paper plate. That seems like an accident waiting to happen. Pick up these needles because they're going to affect my pour. Oh, rough start, solid finish. And it's full. Tap it off. And almost time for Bear Burgers. Oh, what do we got going on in here? I guess we could split the biggest one open. See what it looks like inside. It looks 90% cooked. Maybe 95% cooked. So these little ones are probably done. We'll just flip those. Let them finish on the inside. Check the inside of this other one. It also looks pretty cooked. We'll just give them... One more minute. These are really fantastic. The maple syrup. 
and the leeks are one of my favorite combos, I think. The bear meat's really rich. So I'm going to finish up these burgers. I'm going to spend about another hour raking snow off the roof. And uh, I won't get it done, but at least there's a few thousand pounds less up there. There's about three feet of snow on the roof right now. It's crazy. Um, and even more on the ground. So I'm glad that I made it up here today and got that task partly done, at least. I want to take some time to visit my neighbors next door. They live up here through most of the year. And then uh, either I'll walk back or um, they offered to give me a lift across on the skidoo. So I'll check my timing and my energy level, see what's going on. So on my Fitbit, I'm already on track to have burned the most calories of any day yet this year. This is day 46 or 47 of the Big Wild Year. It's February the 16th. Um, I guess that's day 47. So I'll be interested to see those stats and I'll show them at the end of the video, my heart rate through the day. And I did not find any squirrels in the camp, which is good, but I just heard two fighting over at the neighbor's camp. My dad built this camp in the 70s and as kids it feels like we lived up here most of the time in the summer so I have lots of fond memories of this spot and it's always nice to come up here and even work doesn't really feel like work sometimes at camp um, and it's a great spot to relax swim fish play cards canoe All the things that are sometimes hard to fit in your regular daily life. I hear that squirrel over there now. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here for my lunch. And I might show a little bit more footage here at the end as I go back across the lake. And I'll include my Fitbit stats for the day at the end as well. Well, I didn't get it done, done, but that big pile of snow is all snow that's not on the roof anymore. So that's a good feeling. Same on this side over here. And uh, now it's tea time with the neighbors. Doesn't, doesn't look like much. In fact, you can't even see it right here. There it is. That's my trail from uh, when I came out earlier. And it doesn't look like much, but because I already packed it that couple of inches with my snowshoes, it's quite a bit faster than if I was to walk beside it. And I'll get back to the main trail soon, and then I'll be able to go a little bit faster again. And be on my way home. Check the old Fitbit at the end of the day and uh, see how many calories I burned for this adventure. Take a look at this screen capture from my Fitbit dashboard. This is by far my most active day of the Big Wild Year because I had a pretty sustained effort from you know about eight o'clock in the morning through till uh, fairly late in the evening, but you can see all those spikes of activity in the middle of the day. Uh, the first one being probably loading up my truck and getting ready to go, and then a break when I went driving, followed by my long hike across the lake and a lot of digging, then a break while I cooked my lunch, um, another spike when I did some more raking, um, and then the uh, and then my trip out also. And then I kind of relax through the evening. Some other interesting things on here. So 30,000 steps for the day and well over 4,000 calories burned. Um, distance traveled. I had 287 active minutes in that day. And if you look at the um, third bottom 
square, it's showing that my resting heart rate in the last month has declined from over 60 beats per minute to 54 beats per minute, which seems like a pretty big drop to me. So I've really been enjoying wearing my Fitbit. It's a Fitbit Ionic. I got it because it's waterproof and uh, I'm getting lots of really interesting feedback on my activities. Not always with the big wild year, but other activities as well. And, and I'll try and include those in some of my videos just for uh, interest sake. This is uh, quite a bit different going back than coming in this morning. There's no wind and I'm very warm. I've got my outer gloves off. I got my two coats undone and I even undid my thigh zippers on my leggings just trying to keep from getting sweaty and I'm almost off the open snow here I'll be back on the trail in about 100 meters and then it should be clear walking all the way back the end of a fabulous little day adventure I know it kind of seemed like a work trip but it was pretty good to get out of the house shovel some roof snow instead of some driveway snow and uh, get a little bit of sunshine here and there and cook on a barbecue that's not buried under the snow it was a good day